Hello, today I thought we'd do some creative coding. We're going to look at something known as tiling the plane. This is both a programming and mathematical sort of curiosity, but it's also used quite a lot. It's used in everything from trying to make a 3D game and put the textures on the walls and the floor, to literally tiling your bathroom floor. Now this isn't a lecture, so you can follow along. I've got code and explanations written in a little web page that I've linked below, so have a look at that. So the first way is called texturing. It's what you've seen in every 3D game since the beginning. They have some sort of image, hopefully quite high resolution, that is then just stuck on the floor, or stuck on the wall, or a big special one stuck on the ceiling to look like a sky. They're all drawn either at a really high resolution so that when you get close to them they still look good, or they use various techniques to swap out increasingly high resolution images. So with a texture it has to be drawn at a certain size because it is literally just a two-dimensional picture. However, it is then applied to something that in a 3D world is being scaled and rotated and moved. So as you get closer to it, it can lose detail. Now there's various ways of dealing with this. And I'm mostly looking at 2D things today. So let's move on to what we do in the 2D world. The most basic way is to split the screen up into a number of tiles. This is how nearly all old games consoles worked. The screen was not actually per pixel like modern screens are. Instead they were split into a grid. And then each location on that grid could have a little square picture applied to it called a tile. It's also what we've been doing for thousands of years to cover the floors of our buildings. You've been in a room that's had probably a black and white checkered floor. That's just made from two types of tile, a black one and a white one stuck together. The thing with this type of tiling though is it gets quite repetitive. Our brains are quite good at spotting patterns, especially repeating ones. You've probably played a 2D game and looked at the grass around the player and noticed that there is a repeating pattern going on. Now it can sometimes be a design choice that that exists or they simply don't care and realise that most people won't notice it but it is still there and once you've spotted it, you can spot it everywhere. A more interesting way is to use a non-repeating pattern. There's quite a few of them, but the most popular is known as a Penrose tile. And there's quite a lot of YouTube videos that go into the detail of how this works. So I'm not going to explain that here, but it makes quite an interesting pattern with just a few simple shapes. And no matter how you put the shapes together, you're guaranteed a pattern that will not repeat. So the tiling system that I am going to look at today is known as Wang tiles and they work in a certain way. So what you have is your plane that you want to tile. You split it into a grid just like before with normal tiling but then each tile is made up of four smaller pieces. It's made of four small triangles which you can label as north, east, south and west. And the idea is that if we give each one a bit mask, so north is equal to 1, east is equal to 2, south is equal to 4, and west is equal to 8, we can now use some very basic maths and logic to pair these tiles up together so they fit with a certain rule. And what we're going to do is have two colours. By doing this we have 16 different patterns, all unique, that cleverly we can now combine together to completely fill a space, making sure that all edges match each other. So for example, if the south triangle of one tile is coloured in, we make sure the tile below it, its north tile, is coloured in. If you do this across an entire surface, you'll end up with a pattern that's full of sort of diamond shapes, but it's not a repeating pattern. But it's also not completely random. So this makes a pattern, which looks okay, but we can use this for something a bit more interesting. If we replace all the coloured triangles with a set of actual tiles that have segments of paths drawn on them, and wherever the north, east, south or west edge is coloured in, we draw the path going off it, we can start to make something that looks more useful. So as you start to draw this out, it starts to create paths all by itself, and they're all complete. Like you don't get any weird bits where it just suddenly stops, or where it's supposed to have gone off one tile onto the next and it doesn't. And this is completely algorithmic. There's no human required to make this work. It's just part of the algorithm. So you could imagine that this could create paths for a game. There's an alternate to this as well. I've been looking at the edges, but another method is to consider the corners. So if you think of the corners instead of the edges and do slightly different but very similar maths, you can create areas of like grass maybe and dirt that look more realistic. So there we go. 
that's a quick look at some ways to make interesting tiled surfaces. This could be useful in a game, or it could just be a nice beginning of an art project or something. You can do it using more than two colours. I have an example that uses four colours, and it starts to create interesting just patterns by itself. I was originally going to use this as like a background image on some of my videos, but it looks a bit too busy. But I might use this in a game or something in the future. So, if you like this stuff, it'd be nice if you told YouTube by clicking the like button. And if you want more things like this, consider subscribing. It's free, doesn't cost anything, it's not that kind of subscription. And I'll see you in the next video.